So here's a piece that I'm going to carve today. Uh, this is a, uh, a very large red maple piece. And you can see this wonderful crotch grain uh, running through here. Uh, the pith of the tree, it was kind of, these were your, your two pits running this way. And the uh, uh, first thing I will do is kind of define the footprint of the piece. What I, what I plan on doing is, you know, taking some of these bad spots out uh, here and here, uh, kind of take a piece off there, a piece off there, and a piece off here to, to narrow it up a little bit. And uh, what I'm envisioning is a very long, narrow, fan-shaped piece. Uh, I'd like to keep it narrow enough that it would work really well on a mantle and show all this. Uh, all this you know, end grain, um, you know, leave these bark inclusions and, uh, you know, just this, this is really going to have a lot of really sweet uh, curl and, and color. So when I start carving a piece, I really consider the natural form of the wood. I try to incorporate the grain and the figure. I know where it's going to be and I try to enhance that. I've been carving wood for pushing 30 years now and over time my process has evolved. You know, I use uh, different tools than I begin with. When I started this process, I basically used a chainsaw, a 3 8 inch drill, and an angle grinder. At this point, I have an arsenal of tools. Some of them are amazingly fast. They're also amazingly dangerous. It takes a lot of focus. I've always compared it to improv, and even though now I'm doing more angular shapes, the shapes I do now are kind of influenced by, you know, from a natural standpoint, the western Rocky Mountains, and as well as a, a jewelry series that I did with my daughter, where we made bracelets and we started carving, grinding wood jewels as a decorative piece for the top of them. And so, I don't know, something just kind of happened in my mind and I just started thinking a little more angular. It's almost a cubist-like approach and a lot of times it really reminds me of origami paper sculpture. You know, it's a, it's a lot of fun. I started kind of squaring off the feet at first and then transitioning to the more historic kind of signature organic forms and then I started taking that hard edge just further up the piece until it came all the way to the edge and then I realized that it gave me a lot of flexibility I've always thought about you know how the piece touches the surface that it sits on I'm really happy with the way this foot touches the ground and I can carve them out and keep them light you know sometimes they're very architectural, but you know, they can also take on a figurative stance if the feet are just kind of positioned, you know, almost like an animal uh, as it walks. 